Welcome to Global Public Health Podcasts, where we learn from each other about the global and local intersections in health. Hi, I'm your host, Lauren Clark. I'm a professor of nursing at the University of Utah College of Nursing, and I'm bringing to you stories from students with insights into global health. Angie just returned from an experience in Peru where she became a public health worker in a global health environment. Let's listen to what Angie has to tell us about public health surveillance and how surveillance helps plan for the next step in a public health program. So my name is Angie Fischler. I'm a third semester nursing student here at the University of Utah. I also have my master's of science in public health. During the public health program, I got my global health certificate. For that, we were required to do a study abroad trip. So I went to Trujillo, Peru to do some global health research. And that was in the summer of 2015. Um, While I was there, I participated in a women's health study where we were asking women about their knowledge and use of contraceptives, a brief sexual history, and their use of screening tools for cervical cancer and breast cancer. We were asking a lot of questions about different types of birth control because that was another study that was done off of our survey was what are the common kinds of birth controls that they know of and what do they use and we were asking about like sperm jelly and the women were like jelly like what they don't use that there it's not common and some like uh i guess translational barriers of like this is what we call it but that's not what they call it over there and we didn't meet with the leader of the clinic like the women's health leader of the clinic until after we had done our surveys and that would have been so much better to do before because they even had like a booklet with pictures of different kinds of birth control and how women women make the decision. Sometimes we had medical students with us who spoke Spanish and they were locals, so that obviously made it a lot easier to get this information out of women. We were asking them like number of sex partners and what kind of birth control they use. That's really personal information and so I think it was harder for women to disclose that to us just walking around their neighborhood, you know, like I think it was always four of us, four white girls who We're just so lost and struggling so much, but a lot of long days, and we were very fortunate when we had the medical students with us. So I think it was easier for them to disclose to the local medical students. We had primarily females following us, and out of, we surveyed for two weeks, and out of those two weeks, I think we only had three days with medical students, and those were the best days. We got so many surveys done, but then the days when it was just us on our own, we were lucky if we busted out like three all day just because they took so long or the women wouldn't answer all of the questions to us because they didn't feel comfortable. A lot of the time also the women were with their families so it was a lot of babysitting or trying to distract the men so we could talk one-on-one with the women. So I thought it was really important for my study specifically um, why surveillance was important is because cervical cancer is the most common cancer in Peru but breast cancer is the second most common and from my findings we can see that the screening tools for breast exams for breast cancer are not as common among the women in Peru as the cervical screening exams are. So it's kind of like what should be the next hurdle that we should face. And I think that's important. I think surveying a population can predict what's coming next sometimes. So the way the city is set up is it's a valley and then you have the benches, kind of like what we have here in Salt Lake. But instead of the richer people living up on the benches, that's where most of the poor people lived. And so It was a desert type environment, but on the coast. And so on in the Altos Trujillo area, which is on the benches, it's all dirt and sand. And so people are building these huts on the dirt and the sand. And on a windy day, or if the land is going to change, then their house could just slide off and they could lose their home completely. Um, We were walking around a lot of the dirt streets just trying to find women to survey. We would start out in the clinic areas um, and kind of make our way out from there. And a lot of the clinics were dirty, a lot of kids. Um, We saw some unhealthy looking people like very jaundiced and thinking that they were jaundiced because they ate too many papayas over the week. That was one man we saw. And There were a couple of, this is just a side story, there were a couple of doctors on the trip with us 
and they were like, his pancreas is off. Like, just diagnosed him right on the spot. They told, sent the man home and told him not to eat a papaya every day for the next week to see if this jaundice unhealthy look resolves. But that was more of a, that's all they could do. There was no other resources in the clinic that they could help the man to do a comprehensive write-up like we were saying. Um, so it was, yeah, just kind of sending the patient home with, out a true solution. What I learned most about global health going to Peru and just in my classes is understanding what the destination, the global destination that you're going to, what they feel like they need and what they want compared to saying you need this and you should want this because we have this so you must need and want it also. That was definitely a highlight of my global health education. And a lesson that I learned just from my global health research trip is it's best to go to the clinic and become aware with what resources they have, what the area is like, what their knowledge could be, what different types of birth controls that they use compared to going in with what do we use, what do we have, because it's obviously not the same over there. And that's something that I think would have made our experience much more successful but I come back knowing that global health never works out how you want it to there's always so many unexpected changes but it's so fun and you learn so much about yourself and others and how you can help and just becoming more and more familiar with the area it's definitely an enriching field I think that being too afraid to have these screening tools. What I learned from it as that being a common barrier to having the screening test done is they don't have the resources to really treat if you do have breast cancer as available for this population that we surveyed. And so thinking about myself, I would be scared too to find out if I have breast cancer and then know there there might not be anything we can do about it. But I think educating patients that there is a solution, that we can help you, that'll be the most important thing. And kind of instilling that fear of, well, if it's not done, then this is what could happen. Because we have all these treatments and these options, at least locally, to help you and refer you to the care that you'll need to cure this or to battle whatever diagnosis we find. And so I think as a healthcare educator, that's important to teach our patients is that there are solutions and resources and we're here to help. So you need to come back. I know you're scared, but we're here to help you and um, you'll come out of this stronger than you came. So if I was a health planner in Peru based on my findings from this survey, I would inform more women about breast screening tools for screening breast cancer and I would ensure that they were using those tools in clinical settings. Um, I don't think women are as aware of breast cancer as they are cervical cancer. And it makes sense, you know, cervical cancer is the most common kind of cancer. So women are aware, they know, but breast cancer is definitely taking the back seat. And I don't think that's fair to women that it's not taken as big of a, it's not as big of a concern. It should be. Yeah, I think that going to Peru and having this global health experience made a difference in what I see as my future nursing career. Um, I definitely want to keep doing research because I think there's, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun stuff to find and I love data. So I get so excited when I see results from doing a survey. Um, So I think in my future nursing, I definitely want to be involved with research And there's such a need in global health. When I went to that conference in April, um, I noticed that there weren't many mental health global health posters, which is fascinating because you think about living in a third world country or a country that's in the middle of war and all of this conflict and all of the mental health associated with that um, and how that's not being taken care of by the local healthcare facilities and If it's they don't have the resources, they don't have the time, I don't know. But I think there's just so much that I can do that we can all do to help that, whether it's research and surveying an area or going over to work as a nurse. I mean, I don't know. Just so many possibilities and so much need for sure. Um, I think my biggest lesson learned while I was over there 
is that it's hard work and you ne- can never know enough. Like I came back thinking, wow, I had this great global health experience. And then I was lucky enough to go to the conference in April, uh, a few months later, and I learned so much more there and how unprepared I am to you know, take on global health, but that I love it so much because it's an ongoing learning experience. Angie just talked to us about Peru and the important lessons she learned. Well, two lessons, really. The first is that surveillance data can help with program planning. And the second lesson that I took away was that program planning has to meet patient needs. And she assured that because she did a survey and really listened to people and their health priorities. Thank you, Angie, for sharing your experience, and good luck on your next adventure in global health. Thanks for tuning in to the Global Health Podcast, where we learn from each other about the global, local intersections in health. I'm Lauren Clark. Thanks for joining us.